The web was named for associations. Associations are the thing that the people who invented the web thought with a great brand new and wonderful uh, new features that the web was going to bring. In the old days, if you wanted to link one item of information to another, what would you do? Well, you'd create some sort of bibliographic reference, and that bibliographic reference said, go to the library in effect and look for this title in the card catalog. Having found it in the card catalog, the card catalog will point you to the place where that, that the paper is to be found, and you can go retrieve that paper and see what I mean when I said you should look at that piece of paper if you've seen what I've, um, what I've been presenting. That's the old style of a cross-reference or an association from one item of information to another. And that was pretty laborious, pretty clunky. You couldn't really follow those links very quickly. And then the inventors of the web said, wow, what are we going to be able to do when one click, one little stroke of the mouse can take you from any piece of information to any other piece of information? That's the revolution. That was the revolution they thought they were creating. A revolution of association, a revolution of connection between one item and, and the next inside of a worldwide information base where every bit of information can be connected to any other bit of information. And so they named, the, they, they named that uh, information base a web because they thought that the associations were the main way that people would traverse that information space, the main way people would find information in that information space, that any item could be connected to any other item, and therefore people would get to any item from any other item. So the conception was a vastly interconnected space of items of information, and of course those items of information we know are files. So really a vastly interconnected space of files where the where the links, where the associations are those hypertext references, those hrefs. Well, did it turn out that way? Did it turn out that the main mode of navigation, the thing that most characterizes the World Wide Web, is associations? Is that linking? Well, in one sense you could say that's true because, as we've talked about, everything does boil down to a link, everything does boil down to a, a, a hypertext cross-reference from one item to another. But in terms of the access structure that organizes the web, the way that we move around on the web, the thing that most characterizes the web, what would you say? Is it, an, is it, is it a cross-reference structure? Is it a hierarchy? Yahoo thought it was a hierarchy, and Yahoo made a major bet that they could put together the grand table of contents or outline or subject index of the web and by that way get people to things on the web. And that was a natural assumption to make given that the major way that we navigated print materials was by hierarchy. But did it work out for Yahoo? Is Yahoo on top? Not quite. Who's on top? Google's on top. And what does Google use as the way that, uh, that we access the web? Does it use cross-references? Does it allow us to get from one item to another? Not so much. Does it use hierarchies? Google plays around with hierarchies, but the mechanism that Google uses and the thing that we use most to traverse the web is an index, a full text index of all the words on the web. So if I was naming the web right now, I wouldn't name it for a, for a, a cross-referential or an associative access structure. I would name it for an index, and I might call it the worldwide index, not the worldwide web.